What's going on guys? Today I'll be taking you through the design for my new wide body mounts. All right guys, so last time I got both of the quarters cut to their final shape and then mounted up. And I like the way the fitment sits as of now. So these are the measurements that I used to base my mounts off of. As I showed last time, I used some cardboard to build up the spacing between the stock body and the new fender. So then I was able to measure the gap here on top and then also on the bottom sections. And I wanted to design the mounts in such a way that it fills this top surface completely so you can't look down in. And I knew I wanted some type of mount here by the rear bumper, and then also probably something similar up here by the rocker panel. So now I'll take you guys inside and show you exactly what I came up with. Okay, here's the model I made of my quarter panel, and this is not completely accurate. I just kind of modeled something pretty quickly to give a visual representation of how the mounts will work. This isn't exactly what the body of the car looks like but it's kind of close. I do have the curve of the body in there and that should be pretty accurate because I did measure the car at least in this direction. The curve in this direction I just kind of made up uh, just because I know it does curve there but that's not important for these purposes. And then here is my new over fender that I'm putting on. I'll start with the top mount here because it is the largest and uh, most complicated piece. So if I open that up by itself you can see from the top, kind of the side, there is a slight curve in it. And that is to match that curve I mentioned of the body. At first I wasn't going to put this curve in it and maybe get some material that had some pliability that I could maybe heat up and bend to get the correct shape. But that's not very reliable and I don't really know the perfect material that would work well doing that. So I decided to measure the car and I think I did get some pretty good measurements. So this should be very close. Uh, the material I did choose, I should be able to adjust it a little bit if necessary, but this at least will have the curve built into it. It will be cut that way so that then I'm not having to do a lot of bending to match the curve of the body. So, and then on the mount itself, it's pretty simple. It's got a bunch of flanges here. So everything on this side, on this inside, that's where it's contacting the car. So a bolt will be going through this into the car and I'll show you on the main assembly how that works. And then all the flanges on this outside will be bolting to my new fender. And the reason these are offset like this is to make it a lot easier to machine uh, because if you had them right in line, it would be a little bit more difficult. It would take a few more operations to get this made, maybe make the, uh, the part cost a little bit higher as well. So now back to the full assembly, I can show you exactly how this works. So here is the bolt that will be going from the mount into the body of the car. And so I'm using an Allen head here. So in confined spaces, it's a lot easier to try to use an Allen wrench as opposed to a screwdriver. And then what I'll be bolting into here, this is actually a riv nut. So if you haven't seen this before, to install them, you use a special tool that threads into the, the female threads in here. And then it pulls that in, which flares out the outer section here just like a normal rivet so that it will then pinch the material that you're going into right on this flange. So that's a nice way to go as opposed to a normal rivet because then everything will be removable after the fact. I don't want to permanently fix the mounts to the car. I want to be able to change this in the future if I need to. And I've got four of those riv nuts across the top. And now for attaching the new fender to the mount. I'll be using something a little different. Um, I thought about going with exposed hardware, but I really am not a huge fan of that look. I don't have that on my front fender, so it wouldn't really match if I had like heads of bolts sticking out all over this, this new fender. So I wanted to hide the hardware, but of course it's a little tough when you're dealing with a stock quarter panel that I cut out of another car. Of course there's no way to easily attach that to a mount. So your options basically come down to welding something onto the new fender or using some type of an adhesive. So I'm going to be attempting to use the second option with using some adhesive mount studs. And that's what this is here. And this is what it's going to look like. So it's basically just a stud 
with a pretty big flange at the bottom with which has some holes in it and those holes are so that you can put adhesive underneath this and then also it will flow up over top to provide a really nice hold and here's a little cross section of exactly what I'm talking about this is the the stud I would be putting adhesive underneath this flange and then also let it flow up over top and that's why I have some clearance built in here into my mount to allow for some extra adhesive that goes over I would definitely sand all the paint off of the inner side of the fender before I do the adhering. It's always best to adhere straight to the metal. Uh, usually provides a better bond than if you're trying to bond to the paint itself. And the biggest thing here is going to be choosing the right adhesive to make sure it's a really strong bond. So what I'll be going with is a Loctite product. Uh, it's a two-part structural adhesive known as H3000. And so I looked through a bunch of different types of adhesives and epoxies. And this is a nice general purpose adhesive that dries pretty quickly and it also is incredibly strong. And the biggest problem we're going to be dealing with is, is shear force in this design. So you can imagine as the car is bouncing, you're hitting big bumps. There's going to be a lot of force in this direction and that's known as shear force. So the shear strength is what's going to matter the most. And as you can see here, we're going to be dealing with steel, which is the new fender and then stainless steel is the adheron stud that we're going to be installing and both of these are very high so 4000 psi and 3500 psi and that's really good in comparison to other products i looked at uh, for example jb weld is more in the 2000 psi range um, so this should perform great as long as i sand the surface like i said make sure everything's nice and clean before I actually apply the adhesive. And so that is the top mount. The bottom mounts are really the exact same construction. So there's one here and then there's one here. They're a little bit different sizes. The back one's a little longer. What you don't see in this model is this actually kicks up and out right in the wheel well area. So that's why this ends here because it also does that angle up here on the stock body. So it'll stop right there, but yeah, the exact same construction. The only thing is the bottom ones are not curved because there is not much curve in the body in these portions and it's very short. So if there is a little bit of a curve, it really won't matter. So both the bottom mounts have two spots where it attaches to the body and then two spots where it will attach to the new fender. And again, they're made in the same way to make them very easy to machine. So you might be wondering how exactly am I going to install all this because there is a lot of hidden hardware here. So the outer ones should be pretty easy to reach in from the side to get and then the bottom I can reach in both sides pretty easily to get all of those. The hardest ones will be the two middle bolts on the top. So what I think I'll do is attach the mount like this first to the body and then these studs will be glued to the new fender and so when I throw on the new fender, I should be able to reach up in here and then throw a nut on these studs and then tighten it with a wrench. At least that's what I'm thinking. I'll probably, I might need to take the wheel off to be able to get my hand up there, but I'm thinking there is enough room. This is about two inches. So I think I can slip a wrench up there pretty easily. So the nice thing about these mounts is they are completely symmetric. So I don't need anything different for the left side. I'll just need two each of all these mounts, so I'll have six total mounts, and it'll work exactly the same on the other side because they are symmetric. So that's pretty much it for the mount design. It's extremely simple, uh, but I think it will give me the look that I'm after. So like I said in the beginning, you won't be able to see down in from the top, but I will be leaving the front and rear open like that. I think I might add something in here at some point. I'll just wait and see how it looks uh, after everything is painted. I'll also mention the mounts are actually not the same width the whole way. Uh, to get the fitment the way I want it and so that it's not covering too much of the tire out in the front and the back here, the bottom mounts are a little bit thinner. So this one I believe is an inch and five eighths and then this one is an inch and a half. So it does kind of tilt in towards the body at the bottom not really enough that you would see much difference on this gap here in the front or the back but it's enough just so that you see a little bit more of the tire and it's not you know hiding the tire too much out here in the front or the back. And I also just threw in my wing uh, since I designed that as well 
I threw my trunk and my wing just for a little bit more of a visual there. So that's going to be it for today, but next time I should have the real mounts in my hands so we can start assembly and bolt the fenders onto the car.